Alright, welcome to the next part of the guide where I'll be taking you into aircraft tips and tricks. Uh, because aircraft are a bit more complicated to begin with than ground vehicles, I thought I would make this guide. If you're into ground vehicles, just get in a few matches and have fun. But soon enough, you'll see that in arcade matches, you can fly out on an aircraft if you do well. And in realistic battles, you can bring aircraft directly in your lineup, and I'll talk about that soon, so stay tuned for that. Suffice to say, aircraft are going to be part of the battle whether you're playing an air match or a ground match. So it helps big time to learn how to handle one, and that's exactly what we're going to go over today. Alright, here's our results from the last battle, and we got some things that are kind of shiny, but don't matter a whole bunch. Here's what we got as far as Silver Lions, and we still have the Golden Eagles we got from completing the tutorial. Don't spend those yet. We got some RP, and that goes toward the F222.2 Heavy Bomber, which is not a bad thing to unlock. Generally, bombers aren't very useful in this game, but there are a few exceptions, including the F222 series of bombers. So I'll have to cover them in a bomber video soon. Okay. We also unlocked some modifications, and Gaijin is going to tell us exactly what to do with them. And I guess we can't even really choose what we're going to research here. <laughs> okay. Apparently all we got was ammo belts, uh, and now we have the... We've begun to unlock our 7 mil MGs, and they're like, hey, look, you could purchase them for 40 golden eagles. Don't do that. Never purchase a modification until far later you can decide if you want to quick research with golden eagles for top tier modifications to save yourself a headache. But for now, working on the F222.2. You could go for later fighters, like the D501, which is a very, very fun fighter. But let's unlock that bomber. That means we'll have to go into another battle, but before we do that, let's get a little bit of practice in. What do I mean by that? Stay tuned. Here you have your crew, and you can also select Test Flight, Assign Crew Skills, which we will talk about in a later video, but you won't have a lot of skill points at this point, so don't worry about that yet. It basically just increases the effectiveness. Effectiveness! It's the efficiency and the effectiveness <laughs> put together <laughs> of your crew. Um, but not to an overpowered level, so you're fine without messing with it for now. Test flight is what we're going to look at. You can also go into customization to put decals on your vehicle or change your camouflage if you've unlocked new camouflages. Modifications brings you to the things that you've unlocked as modules on your airplane. These are performance upgrades over here. This is also uh, a straight upgrade to your vehicle. And then under weaponry, you can find upgrades and options for your weapons. Now we've been running the default 7.5 millimeter ammunition, and we can now change it to a different kind of ammunition if we want. Incendiary Tracer, that's a thing. Universal has tracers, armor piercing, and incendiary. And you can see that down under armor penetration, we have 10 millimeters at point blank range compared with 3 millimeters at point blank range. So let's use these universal rounds because they have a good mix of armor piercing, which will give us better ability to punch through, as it says, armor or take out a, a big heavy metal object like an engine or even tear off a wing and it also has incendiary rounds which can, which can light fuel tanks on fire and that can be a great way and a cinematic way to get kills so we load up the universal ammunition now let's go back to hovering over this vehicle the D500 is probably the best starter plane for the French I enjoy it immensely, and the D501 is an absolute blast. I have a video on that, but let's go straight into test flight. Here you select the game mode. It says difficulty, but it's really like the game mode that you're playing in. You want to practice for arcade battles? 
realistic or simulator that's how you do it let's select arcade battles for now limited fuel why don't we click no let's not worry about that for now limited ammo no so we can reload as many times as we want camo yes user skin disabled you should check out some user skins later on it's a lot of fun gun targeting distance 400 meters works just fine for these machine guns again i believe we talked about that before that's where your guns converge so at that range you're going to be dealing the most precise damage and then your weapons spread out before that and after that if that makes sense to you we've set up our bomb fuse already minimum load of fuel that's good the less fuel you carry the lighter your aircraft is and the more you're going to be able to climb and turn carrying more weight reduces your plane's ability to fly well you can fly fast you can dive fast but you can't climb well and you can't turn well and those two things are essential for a fighter these all look good so let's go over here to mission editor now we're going into a special kind of test flight uh, here's the area that you can fly in even down to the specific sector of the map and let's put ourselves in a friendly sector at the front and scenario head-to-head -head combat you can see there's several things you can choose from let's use head-to-head -head combat allied aircraft skill rookie enemy skill rookie good then we can focus on our own flying all these are good no takeoff airborne so we start in the air which is faster all that's good let's hit apply here's our allies let's turn them down to zero so that we can focus on our own flying and here's our enemy we have 22 of them that should work out nicely for us let's go into a battle now again this is a test flight but we're actually going to be flying against bots and shooting down the computer there's no special reward for this but it's the best way to get a feel for your aircraft and to practice with the guns so let's do that and now let's go over the controls that I've talked about X is the camera control button so where it's the mouse look activation so let's skip straight into the combat and I'll continue talking about controls while we approach the enemy and as in a regular battle we're gonna climb as we go toward them there's our team I'm holding down the X button now to look around you see that and now I can use W S A and D to control my aircraft so now I can get on an enemy or a friendly's tail and shoot him down why am I shooting down my friends I want it to just be about me today <laughs> so I'm shooting down my friends again these are AI so we don't worry about making their day no good <laughs> see how we're coming down on them and then pulling up and then rolling over and coming back down that's called a high yo-yo there should be one more of our planes there he is we'll just leave him to it so when you're facing someone head-on it's good to not fly in a straight line because they can catch you easily if you do that when you're facing someone in a head-on engagement let's say this guy right here if he was coming head-on at us well yeah we're diving down on him it's not gonna work out if someone's coming straight for you you want to roll underneath them the reason you roll underneath and don't try to go above them is they are much more able to aim at you I hear somebody shooting at me they're much more able to aim at you if you go above because your speeds gonna be slower so go below them and their ability to aim down uh, is less than their ability to aim up it's harder to pull down than it is to pull up does that make sense and we're out of ammunition already in an air RB match we would be going back to base already but this is arcade so we get a reload let's talk more about tactics so again we want to aim in front of the enemy 
in front of the lead indicator and give him the good news. There it is. And these are AI, so they're just going to turn with you. So this is how to do an, a test flight against AI to get a feel for your guns. But as you can see, they're not really challenging. They just kind of drive, they just kind of fly in circles and let you shoot at them. So it's a good way to get a feel for your guns, but it's not the best way to learn defensive flying. If you want to learn to defensive fly, well, there's two things. You can imagine someone behind you. Um, or you can squat up with a teammate and have them have them teach you in a custom battle and we'll talk about that more later but this is the best way to get a feel for your aircraft do a little bit of this have some fun and then jump into a few more matches and you'll see that your performance is greatly improved so that is the custom test flight and that is a tool that you will continue to use throughout the rest of the game. Now I'm going to go into a regular test flight. So just go here, test flight, arcade battles, OK. And now we're going to start off from the runway. And I'm going to show you a few tricks to using keyboard controls and show you a few simple aerial maneuvers that you can use with just about every fighter. Other planes, like bombers, will not be able to use some of these maneuvers, but you should be able to use these as a bomber. And now we're up in the air. At this point, if we had retractable landing gear, we would press the G key to pull our gear up into our plane, but we don't have landing gear and we don't have flaps, so we don't, or we don't have retractable gear. The gear is stuck in that open position, and we don't have flaps, so we're good to go. Now, let's show you a few maneuvers. This is an aileron roll. You're just pressing the, d the A or the D key to roll. When do you use an aileron roll? Um, well, let's turn the smoke on. Only when you want to do something like this. And we look behind ourselves and isn't that pretty? A nice little corkscrew. Uh, <laughs> it looks good, but it serves no purpose in defensive flying. However, a half roll will line you up for a turn so you can roll and then turn see how we did that let me tell you what I did with the keyboard to accomplish that turn so again you can roll and then turn with the mouse or you can roll and then use the elevator button on your keyboard in my case it's S in order to turn you can also roll a negative G turn and you see how much slower the plane turns when using negative G than we using positive G again negative G turn pulling down positive G turn pulling up see the difference good I just did something a little bit different at the end there I did a snap roll so here's a regular roll here's a snap roll do you notice something different about how my plane is moving look at the tail of my plane when they do the snap roll that's because we're rolling with the ailerons, our A key in this case, and we're also throwing in some rudder, in this case the Q key. See what that does? The Q skews our tail around. That's how you can aim quickly to the side. Or if you're turned sideways, it's up or down. See what I'm doing there? Learning to use your rudder as soon as possible will give you a huge advantage. Now, let's talk about a few more maneuvers that use the rudder. So this is a barrel roll using the rudder. There's two ways to do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll! <laughs> you can use aileron and elevator. Well, that was different. Did I do that right? No. There we go. That's one way to do barrel roll. Aileron and elevator. Elevator. Aileron. Or you can use cross aileron and rudder. So you kick the rudder in the opposite direction of your aileron. Like this or like that. That's another kind of barrel roll. These 
are a little bit more defensive of maneuvers. So again, aileron roll, if you look, if somebody's directly behind me and they're aiming at the middle of my aircraft, they can still hit me because I'm flying along my central axis. But it makes a nice image with the smoke. That's about all it does. And then barrel roll. Now I'm getting wobbly. If you look at the smoke of the flight path that I'm taking, not only am I falling, but I'm also moving erratically. That is a defensive flying maneuver that makes you more difficult to hit. Now try mixing that up with some elevator and you have yourself a real defensive maneuver as you can see. That's one way to avoid getting hit. Let's talk about an aggressive maneuver. Let's say someone's directly in front of you and they suddenly turn and dive to the side. Let's try our snap roll. Now we're on target very quickly. Do you see how that worked? Again, snap roll is rolling to one side with your aileron, in this case A or D, and also following it with same side rudder control. So it's Q and A, see how quickly we turn to the side? or D and E, depending upon which side you're going to. That's one way of quickly lining yourself up with a turn, and it's one way to cut off someone quickly in a maneuver I'm going to show you next. This is rolling scissors. See what we're doing? I'll look behind me, and you can see what we're doing a little bit better. We're rolling. and using the elevator at the same time and you can come up and roll even more with this make it even more up and down what does this maneuver do we can kill our airspeed by doing this because again we lose speed every time we turn and in realistic battles this will slow you down much more rapidly than it does in arcade as we're in and it will also make it difficult for the enemy to target you see this is a rolling scissors. This is a basic defensive maneuver and when you're attacking someone the way to counter rolling scissors is to pull your own rolling scissors and to do it better or to choose some other maneuver. Uh, for example, if someone pulls rolling scissors and they start slowing down, you can pull up and then roll over and come back down on top of them. That's called a yo-yo. We've talked about this before. This is your standard attacking maneuver. When someone starts moving slower than you, pull away from them, look at them, roll over, and come back down on top of them. And then roll to where you're right side up. Make sense? Then you shoot them. You give them the good news. <laughs> okay, what's another maneuver we can show you? Here's one that is both defensive and offensive and it's called a split S. Turn your plane upside down and use the elevator. Now you're moving 180 degrees in a different direction than you were before. Look at our smoke. Again. Roll your plane over. Oh, sorry, different maneuver. Roll your plane over, use the elevator. Look at that beautiful split S. There are several variations of the split S. You can pull up a bit and roll and then come over. See how that makes a slightly different shape in the smoke? It's a little bit sharper way of performing a split S. You drop a bit less. So again, pull up, roll over, come around. Beautiful. And you can combine this with a little bit of rudder, pull up, roll over, and come around. Notice how this time, instead of moving 180 degrees, we've moved, what, 270? Something like that. So there are different versions of the split S, and they're called by different names, but they're essentially part of the same family of techniques. In general, you'll be using the rising split us. I think it's called an Imelman turn, where you come up a bit, 
and then turn around and you'll also be using the standard split S where you roll over and then come under anytime you want to engage someone who's directly behind you or to change your direction very quickly in combat. Make sense? Now why do we not simply rise up in this direction and then roll over? Did you see already why we wouldn't want to do that in combat? In most cases, when you rise up this way, it takes more time and you also lose more airspeed. See? This loop is fatter than the loop we made before with our split S because we're not using gravity to help us. We're fighting against gravity when we come up into this loop. And that can be a valid tactic, but if you need to move quickly, then you want to use gravity to your advantage by doing downward maneuvers as opposed to upward maneuvers. Make sense? What is another aerial maneuver I can show you guys? This is a skid. <laughs> and it looks weird when you're in an air in a fighter, but it makes a lot more sense when you're in a bomber. If you hold rudder to one direction and aileron in the opposite direction, then your plane will jump to the scot to the side quickly. It's called a skid. In a bomber, that's one way of staying relatively level this wise, but still moving in this plane here. You see what I'm talking about? And that is one way of defending yourself from fire from the rear while aiming defensive guns at the same time. Because if you use your elevator, then it throws off the aim of your gunners. But a skid throws them off a bit less, and it's also harder to detect which means that people will be slower to adjust their aim. They'll simply watch their bullets seem to move off to the side of your vehicle, and it takes a moment to recognize that your opponent is using a skid against you. Make sense? All right, let's talk about flying low to the ground. Many times you will find yourself flying low and certain maneuvers such as the split S, where you drop below your current position, will no longer be viable. How do you defensively fly in these circumstances? First off, do not crash into the ground. You need to be aware of what's ahead of you. And secondly, you need to be aware of what's behind you. So there's someone flying very close to us and we're also flying very close to the ground. You need to look and then avoid what's in front of you. Look and avoid what's in front of you. Make sense? You can choose to simply fly as close to the ground and dodge between trees to the best of your ability and that can sometimes help you especially if someone's diving down on you from much higher than your altitude because they may miss and plow into the ground. However, I wouldn't count on that and you might want to pull some maneuvers such as this. <laughs> We're doing, whoa, doggy. Okay, you can tell that I stopped using mouse aim there because when you're very close to the ground, it's better just to hit the elevator button, in this case, S on my keyboard, before you try to look up. It's faster. Again, here's looking up, takes a second. Here's hitting S, immediate. You see that? So flying close to the ground, your first goal is to not crash. Your second goal is to stay aware of where the enemy is. Now we're watching the enemy and we're also avoiding the ground. Let's talk about dolphins. So just using your elevator to dodge fire is also a viable tactic, especially if your opponent is slower than you. So you're starting to build distance between the two of you and they're using tracer rounds, anything with tracers, as you can see. Stealth rounds will be harder to detect, but you can hear them flying past your vehicle, and you can also look and see when the flames are coming from their guns, but that's not the best way to avoid stealth fire. Again, dolphining. 
using the elevator to actively dodge enemy gunfire. Small adjustments are all you need. Look for when they fire and then judge if they're aiming high or low. If they're aiming high, go low. If they're aiming low, go high. If they're aiming right for you, go anywhere. <laughs> if they're going slower than you and they're not catching up, continue flying away and build enough distance between you to where you're safe. If they're going faster than you, then it may be time to pull some turns. Because, in general, uh, a slow moving aircraft can turn faster than a fast moving one. Make sense? Good. Okay, that just about does it for some basic maneuvers. Try these maneuvers on your own. Get a feel for using your keyboard. Look behind you and imagine someone flying behind you. Practice your split S where you're rolling and using your elevator to move. Practice your snap rolls. And then just try combinations of things and see what develops. Crash into the ground a few times. Have a good old time. Practice in arcade mode. Practice in realistic mode and get a feel for your particular aircraft. Not only is this fun in and of itself just for the feeling of flight, but you'll grow so much faster as a pilot and soon see much better results when you practice these maneuvers. Anyway guys, catch you in the next video. We'll try out a realistic battle soon, but before then maybe we'll fly out in our first bomber. Anyway guys, catch you in the next one. Bye bye.